Alright everyone, welcome back to Learning Math with Eric, and in this lesson we're going to be talking about integers. So we're going to actually be looking at what integers are, and then throughout the next few videos in uh, my pre-algebra section on my YouTube channel, we're going to be discussing um, operations with integers, including adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and then we'll be looking at some integer word problems uh, after those videos. So uh, we're going to do a lot with integers, we're going to do a lot of practice with them, so let's get started with today's video. So to help introduce the set of integers, let's use the number line shown. You can see that 0 is in the middle, and then all numbers to the right of 0 are positive, and then all numbers to the left of 0 are negative. So the set of integers includes the set of whole numbers. Now if you remember my first video, I talked about whole numbers, and I talked about natural numbers. Now as a quick review, whole numbers are going to be your counting numbers and 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they keep going on indefinitely. Now, the set of integers also includes the negative counterparts of your, uh, of your whole numbers. Now, when I say negative counterparts, let me give you an example. 1, its negative counterpart is going to be negative 1. For 2, its negative counterpart is going to be negative 2. For 3, its counterpart is going to be negative 3, etc. So the set of integers includes the negative numbers, 0, and then the positive numbers. Alright, so now let's take a quick look at the top of the screen now. It says integers, dot dot dot, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot dot dot. So this is going to be the set of integers. And the dot dot dots just means that the set of integers also includes negative 4, negative 5, and on down and 4, 5, and on up. Alright, so now that we know a little bit more about integers, let's see if we can graph them. So here we're asked to graph the following integers on a number line, negative 2 and 7. So to graph integers, we first construct a number line with 0 in the center, all units to the right of 0 with positive integers, and all units to the left of 0 with negative integers. So to graph negative 2, we're simply going to move 2 units to the left of 0 along our number line, and we can just put a circle at negative 2. And then to graph positive 7, we're just going to move 7 units to the right of 0 along our number line, and we can just put a circle at positive 7. And we have graphed negative 2 and positive 7 on the number line. Alright, so integers can be used to describe a variety of real-world situations. So for the four problems you see here, we're asked to write the integer that describes each of the following situations. So let's take a look at the first situation we have here. A bank withdrawal of $128. So a withdrawal means that you are decreasing the amount of money in a bank, or in the bank. So a bank withdrawal of $128 can just be written as negative 128. For the second situation, 350 feet above sea level. Since sea level is 0, 350 feet above sea level is greater than 0 which means that it is positive, so it can be written as positive 350. For our third situation, since a loss of 13 points is a decrease, which means that it's negative, a loss of 13 points in the stock market can be written as negative 13. And finally, since a gain of 15 pounds in weight is an increase, we can write it as positive 15. All right, so in this problem, we're asked to graph 45 on the number line. And notice that we can't graph 45 on the number line we've been using. There's no place for 45. So in this situation, we have to change the scale of our number line. So I would recommend going up by increments of 10. You can go up by increments of 5, um, 10. You could go up by 20 if you wanted to. 20 actually seems a little bit too big. So no matter what increments we use, whether that's positive 5, positive 10, positive 15, whatever, we have to change the scale of our number line in order for 45 to fit. And once we change the scale of our number line, just follow the steps like we did in our first um, example problem when we were graphing our two integers on the number line. We're going to do the same thing here, just uh, plot a point at positive 45. Alright guys, that about does it for the video. Make sure to practice what you've learned in this video. So make sure to understand what integers are. And as a quick review, remember they are um, your, your whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then they're your negative counterparts um, on the opposite side of zero. And then also make sure to understand how we can plot points on the number line. And then finally, um, be familiar with uh, 
situations involving integers, writing integers from situations. Like we did some uh, situations with bank withdrawals and uh, gains, gains and weight, uh, stuff like that. So be familiar how to write integers with situations and be familiar with how to plot uh, points on the number line. So thanks guys for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks.